Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to talk about manufacturing accounts. Businesses can be broadly classified into two types. Retail businesses, which purchases finished products and sell it to the end customers. Like Walmart, other businesses manufacture their own products and sell it to the customer like Ford and Tesla. As these type of businesses produces their own product for sales, it is quite natural that these businesses will determine the costs incurred in producing the product, which is done by preparing manufacturing account. Manufacturing account is a summary of total manufacturing expenses in order to calculate the total cost of production. Furthermore, unlike the Retail businesses in which the inventory consists of just the finished goods. In manufacturing businesses, the inventory consists of raw material which is purchased for manufacturing the goods, semi-finished goods which is termed as work in progress and finished goods. Moreover, while making final accounts for manufacturing businesses, we also, we also prepare an additional manufacturing accounts. Let us now consider what are the various costs posted in this account. To begin with, we record all the direct costs in the manufacturing account. Direct costs consist of direct material, direct labor and direct expenses. And together, the accumulation of all these direct costs is termed as prime cost. Direct material is the cost of purchasing the raw material as well as the cost of transporting the raw material from the supplier to the factory. Furthermore, one of the uh, uh, other important term which we use when we are recording direct material is the cost of material consumed. The cost of material consumed consists of the opening inventory plus purchases plus all the other transportation charges in acquiring the raw materials minus the closing inventory at the end of the year. Next, we record direct labor. Direct labor is the cost of wages paid to the employees who are directly involved in production. For example, the wages of the carpenter for a furniture manufacturing business. Next, we record all the direct expenses which are incurred in producing the product like royalty, license fees, patent rights and know-how. These are all the direct expenses which are required when we produce a product. Together, all these direct expenses as I stated earlier is termed as prime cost. Once the prime cost is calculated, we sum up the total cost of factory overheads. Factory overheads are those overheads which are indirectly involved in the production process. This involves indirect material, indirect labor and other indirect expenses. Now let us consider what is meant by indirect materials. Materials such as stationery or materials purchased for cleaning the floor or any lubricants purchased for the smooth functioning of machineries are called as indirect materials. We do not include the purchase of raw material in indirect materials as I have stated it before the purchases of raw material is called as direct material. Now let's proceed with the other components of factory overhead. Indirect labor, excluding all the direct labor wages paid to those who are involved in production, the wages paid to the other staff of the factory which ensures the proper running of the factory like the supervisor's salary or the wages paid to the cleaning staff or to the administrative staff is termed as indirect labor. Lastly, we record all the indirect expenses like depreciation of plant and machinery, factory rent, factory lighting, factory insurance and all the other expenses to calculate the total factory overheads. Once we are done with the recording of prime cost and the factory overheads, we will now record the work in progress in our manufacturing account. As I told you before, work in progress means the stock of unfinished goods and since manufacturing is a continuous process and not all the goods are completed or finished at the end of the financial period, we need to record the work in progress. For this reason, we add 
the opening value of work in progress and subtract the closing value of work in progress to find the total cost of production. After the calculation of cost of production, most manufacturing businesses transfer the cost to the income statement at a transferring price which includes a markup percentage of factory profit. The main reason for calculating the factory profit is it helps the management to decide whether to make the product or to buy it from an outside supplier as well as it helps the management to determine the efficiency of the factory unit. Now, after understanding all the elements of manufacturing accounts, let's see the format of manufacturing accounts. The format of manufacturing accounts starts with the cost of material consumed followed by the total prime cost. Next, we calculate the factory overheads along with the entries for work in progress. Thus, we obtain the total cost of production. To this, we add the factory profit and transfer the value to the income statement at a transferring price. Thus, this concludes the format of manufacturing account. Now, let's see few other important things related to manufacturing account before concluding this chapter. One of the important points which we need to consider while making the manufacturing account is when we transfer the price from the manufacturing account to the income statement, we have transferred it at a transferring price which includes the cost of production plus the factory profit. However, according to the realization concept and the prudence concept, profit should not be recorded until it is earned. Hence. We create an account for unrealized profit for the inventory. The provision for unrealized profit is calculated by using the formula closing inventory at transfer price times markup percentage divided by 100 plus markup percentage. And the formula for markup per percentage is equals to profit divided by cost of goods produced times 100. After understanding what is provision for unrealized profit and how to calculate the value, let us now uh, learn about how it is posted in the final accounts. As it is a part of adjustment, hence it will have twofold effects. Firstly, we subtract the total amount from the closing inventory in the statement of financial position. Furthermore, we subtract the total amount from the factory profit in the income statement during the first year of its operation. And in the following year, we find the difference in the provision for two successive years. If there is an increase in the provision, we subtract it. And if there is a decrease, we add it to the factory profit in the income statement, which concludes the overall entry for unrealized profit. Let us revise and conclude this topic by going through the uses of manufacturing account. As we have learned in this video, manufacturing accounts help the management in calculating the cost of production, in making a decision whether to produce or to buy the product from the outside supplier, it differentiate the cost of production into direct cost, indirect cost and office cost. It evaluates the efficiency of the factory unit and it also helps in setting the price of the product. So with this, we conclude this video. In the next video, we will practice exam questions from the past paper related to this topic. Thanks for watching and have a great life.